Hey there, it's Olivia Savannah here from Olivia's Catastrophe and today I'm here to give you an unhaul. I've got a couple of books that are leaving my collection. Most of these are actually books I've already read, but I have a couple DNFs to talk about before we get to those. So without further ado, let's get right down to the books that will be leaving my shelf. So as usual, I'm going to start with the DNFs. First one is The Christie Affair by Nina de Gamon. This is the oldest proof that I had on my shelf, my oldest review copy, so I thought it's about time I pick it up because it's the one that's come up for the longest time and I need to catch up on some reviews. But I started this one and I can see why I kept delaying on reading it because it just wasn't the kind of mystery that I tend to like. If you liked The Appeal by Janice Hadlow, I think this could be one that you would like. But for me, it's just the style wasn't getting to me. I read enough that I could get the characters that were going to be the main characters. I didn't really care about them or like them. And even though this is about Agatha Christie's missing period, I don't feel like it's very aligned with Agatha Christie, like how she would act or her style at all so I was kind of hooked into this one from the Agatha Christie hook but when I started reading it I could tell it was very much not going to be the Agatha Christie vibes I was looking for so I decided it's time to let it go and DNF it. I also read a good hundred pages of and Break the Pretty Kings by Lena Jeong. This is a young adult Korean inspired fantasy book. It's big, it's a beautiful hardcover and it read like every single young adult fantasy I've read before. I'm really struggling with the young adult fantasy genre. I do think a lot of them are quite samey, especially me reading it, the genre now as an adult. This just fell into it being the same kind of thing again. And I just don't need that in my life right now. Such a shame because it's so beautiful. And I have been trying to read fantasy that's from different cultures because I think that's where I can find a lot of uniqueness to the stories that have been told multiple times before. But this unfortunately wasn't what I was looking for. So I've also been every now and again getting to the oldest books on my TBR that I haven't read before. And Killing It by Asia McKay was one of the oldest that I had. This is a book about a mum who is also an assassin. And she she's a new mum actually. This is the first time that she's back to the office post partum and she is juggling having a child and being an assassin essentially and she gets a mission where she needs to infiltrate a nursery and I was not vibing with the writing style in this at all. It was like, I don't know how to describe it but it was the very cutesy kitsch writing style that I expect from adult contemporary books that I find in the works that all have the same kind of cover but then it was a little bit thrown in of the like assassin -y culture but it was all a bit too cheesy. It was all a bit too unrealistic and it didn't lean into the assassination vibes like I found with the old woman with the knife that I find with other action films that I really like. So it was just a bit too contemporary feeling for the action-y book that I was going for and I wasn't a big fan of like the jokes and the writing style and I think when it comes to your sense of humour it's really important that you match it and I was not matching with the humour in this book. I also very quickly DNF'd Middlesex. I've also heard it's not the best intersex representation but I read this because it's about a, a person who is intersex and their experiences, but the whole beginning of this was focusing on not the character that I was looking for, but family that precede this person. And I was uninterested and I was bored, and I know it gets to it later because I was looking at reviews, but I'm not here to wait around and wait for that later to happen. So I've decided to DNF this one. Unfortunately, I tried to read this book on three separate occasions, and that is Locks by Ashley Nugent. I tried to read it as an audiobook, I tried to read it as an ebook, I tried to read it physically, and I just couldn't get behind it. This is about a boy who is British Jamaican and he decides to go to Jamaica to find himself but instead he ends up offending person after person and ending up in a whole load of trouble. I struggled with this because I did not like the main character. He has got so many racist views and internalised racism that he can't really see. His friend that he's with is awful and doesn't seem like much of a friend at all and I was just not liking anyone and I think I've spoken before on how I really struggle with unlikable characters and I don't mind reading an unlikable character if I know that they're redeemable and I know that they're going to get better and I suspect he's going to have a lot of revelations in this and he's going to develop but I was just disliking him so strongly that I just couldn't deal with him. 
and I didn't want to read a book about him. So it was really the main character that put me off this one, which is a shame because I know it's one of those British Jamaican writers where the book is actually set mostly in Jamaica and I'm looking for more and more books set mostly in Jamaica, but this just really wasn't working for me. And then the last one in terms of DNFs is The Overstory by Richard Powers. This was shortlisted for the Man Booker Prize, as I can see from this sticker here. I was interested because lots of people said it was really boring and they didn't think they were going to like it but then they did like it and it surprised them and I'm always looking for something that's slightly surprising but yeah this book did bore me and it wasn't getting better and I didn't care about the writing style it still was really really boring so I decided I was going to DNF it and that is it for my DNFs but there's also one book I want to talk about here and this is this Mortal Coil by Emily Suvada. I just have not been picking this one up and not been picking this one up. And every time I do pick up a young adult dystopian that I haven't read in the past, I tend to just DNF it and not get on with it. And so I dithered and I davered about this one for a very, very long time. And I've just decided it's gonna go because there's, I just cannot envision myself prioritizing it for a very, very long time. And even then I'm not sure if my young adult dystopian mood is going to swing back around. There are all of the ones that I've DNF'd or are unhauling from my shelves that I have not read yet, but that leads me to talk about some of the books that I've actually read but are still leaving my shelves because I don't feel like I need to keep them. So we're starting with The Humans by Matt Haig. This is a book that I read for work. I wouldn't personally have chosen to pick up this book. It's one of the Matt Haig's I've been avoiding and clearly I was right because it just wasn't the one for me. It felt a bit too random. It felt a bit too much of a mix of trying to be sci-fi but actually it's contemporary and that's just not my job. We have Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. So this is a horror book that feels a lot more gothic than horror to me about a woman who is paid money to apartment sit and it's a generous amount of money so she feels like there has to be a catch and as she spends time in this building she discovers that there really is one and something sinister is going down. I with gothic books you have to be patient because after a certain point it's going to get to something, it's going to get to a big reveal and it got to that reveal and I wasn't invested in that reveal and I didn't think it was worth waiting for so while I finished out the book I just didn't love it and I don't think I need to keep it. Nothing But The Truth by The Secret Barrister, this was just a case of I didn't really need to read this book. I liked it, I think it had important things to say but I've already read another book by The Secret Barrister which was also non-fiction and this felt quite repetitive and because it was so repetitive I don't feel like I learned as many new things as I wanted to while reading this book and I feel like the first one did the job for me and I don't need to read more books by The Secret Barrister but I know people who are really excited to read more of their work so I'm going to pass this along to one of those people. Rise of the Sun by Leah Johnson. I really just didn't like this in any which way or regard despite really enjoying the author's debut book but basically my issues to this boil down to Olivia, our main character, who is just so selfish and so self-absorbed and also so judgmental of things that other people do that she then goes and does too, that it really just got on my last nerve. She's also such a bad friend and I'm someone who values friendships in books a whole lot, so seeing her be so awful to her friend made me strongly dislike her. And I also think this book is trying to balance way too many themes, themes which have a lot of depth to them and it doesn't do any of them extremely well and so it was just a disappointment all round and I know this one was a gift from Bookie Tracy I'm unhauling it because I didn't like it but thank you so much I still appreciate having had the chance to read this book I'm also unhauling Quiet by Susan Cain the book is so quiet that you can barely see the cover so this is a non-fiction book about what it means to be an introvert the power of introverts and I feel like it was more so for people who are beginning to find interest in introverts and introversion but I'm way past that because I've done a lot of my own independent research. I also have access to my best friend's wish list, and whenever I am unhauling a book that I know that she wants I can then just pass this right along to her. I can see that this is on her wish list, so I'm giving it to my best friend. If I Survive You by Jonathan Escoffer. I didn't really like any of these short stories all that much except for the second one which is written in part I just found them all to be incredibly, incredibly mediocre and after I finished reading them I was like what is the point? I didn't really see or understand how they linked up. Well I saw how they linked up but I didn't understand the relevance of really having them link up and it was just not the short story collection for me so I don't need to keep it on my shelf. XOXO by Axie O. <laughs> I will never get tired of saying the title and then the author's name because it just sounds so good altogether 
but this is a young adult book where a teenager falls for a k-pop star and it was a good time i liked this one i enjoyed reading it i don't feel like it was the most realistic handling of how it would go if someone decided to date a k-pop star but Sometimes you just want to read something and be happy and enjoy it for its cutesy, romancy vibe. And I did that with this book and it served me well. So I'm happy I read it, but I'm going to pass it along to someone else. It also makes me super sad to let it go because it's so beautiful under the dust jacket. I love when they print the cover onto the dust jacket, but I'm not someone who will keep a book just because it looks beautiful. I, I will let it go. This one is a big chunker and that is my favorite thing is Monsters by Emil Ferris. This is a huge graphic novel that has murder mystery elements to it, grief elements to it, and also just really lovely illustrations. But having said that, it's not the art style that I personally prefer, and I don't think it balanced all the threads and storylines to it all that well. I feel like it was dealing with way too much, and I would have liked if the narrative was fine-tuned a little bit more to focus on certain characters more than others and while I don't think this is the one for me I read it because two of my friends my close friends really really loved this book and I'm going to be passing it along to my younger sister Simone who also really appreciates a good graphic novel I think she's going to like this one a lot more than I did so the next two books I'm unhauling it kind of goes full circle because I received them from somebody else's unhaul and that is You Had Me at Ola and A Lot Like Adios by Alexis Daria. These are two romance books and I read this first one and I enjoyed it. I thought it was sweet, I thought it was cute, it didn't rock my world but it didn't necessarily need to. It had good enough steamy scenes and I really liked our um, main characters and some of the discussions they had about what it means to be a celebrity or latin representation it was all fun and games it was all good but then i read the sequel and this was just awful in every single way i felt like the romance was so forced and contrived into situations that didn't make any sense the motivations just did not add up i also think our main characters didn't really have much romance or chemistry between them it was more so physical interactions and that does not a good romance make to me. I think it was just checkboxing lots of tropes and checkboxing representation in a way where it didn't feel effective at all and last but not least I think a lot of this could be whittled down to lack of communication which is not something I love to see in romance books. So while this was a good time I'm just going to pass both of these on as I'm not going to be continuing the series. I am also passing along Hannah Khan Carries On by Uzma Jalaluddin. This is a You Got Mail retelling and it's a romance we've got mostly main characters and I haven't seen You've Got Mail but I know the general gist of it now but I definitely think that that kind of romance is not my thing I think it's to do with the original film even though I haven't seen it I think that storyline is what I don't particularly love and I'm not a big sell on enemies to lovers either and I don't know, it just felt very, very predictable from day one that these people were who they were. And I was so frustrated that they didn't figure it out along the way. So there were good elements to this as well. It was sweet. It was lovely. It felt a bit like a young adult romance, but they were adult character age was nice. I just don't feel like I need to keep it. I can pass this along to someone else. Sorry Bro by Talene Fuscuni is a contemporary romance book but also very contemporary identity focused and a lot of this has to do with Armenian culture and falling back into love with her Armenian culture from our main character. It's got bisexual representation in it as well and I really liked everything to do with the Armenian culture and heritage because I hadn't read a book with that kind of representation in it before. I hadn't known that much about Armenian culture before and I learned so much from reading this book. I also feel like it wasn't the best in terms of the romance department. I don't think our main character had that much chemistry with the person she ended up with and it felt a lot like the themes and the I search for identity overshadowed the romance where I prefer things to be a bit more balanced. I'm not sure if the bisexual romance representation or the bisexuality representation is the best. I can't speak on it but I've read a few reviews around it and it made my discomfort with the representation click into place when I was reading some own voices reviews. But take that with a hint of salt and read this one yourself to figure out how you feel about it. I gave it a middling rating but again I don't really tend to keep middling rating books on my shelf. How Far We've Come by Joyce Hefia Harmer. 
This is a young adult slave narrative book with time travel elements. It's like the young adult version of Kindred. And what I liked about this is that it's written in Patois. I haven't seen any young adult books written in Patois before. And I also think this one did a good job of not shying away from the slavery elements in it while it being a young adult friendly book. I think it did that very well, but it's personal. It's just a personal thing. I'm pretty oversaturated on slave narratives and I don't feel like I need to keep reading more of them. I was sent this for review which is why I kind of pushed it up on my TBR and read it fairly quickly but it was a good time it just it's not a long time for me and it's not one I need to hold on to. And then last but not least I'm unhauling the Storm Swimmer by Claire Weezer. This is one I read and I liked it but I also was very aware that this is really written for the middle grade audience and particularly a middle grade audience with a fascination of water and the sea and I don't feel like I need to keep on my shelf I can actually see this being one that I'd pass along to my nephew or to just any other child I know because it does its job and I think it's got a lot of really good really important messages for children to process in terms of like environment and climate but also interacting with people from different cultures who speak a different language than you and how to communicate with your parents very well I think it unpacks all of those things and did them very well but at its core it's a book about someone who discovers a sea person and they go on adventures in the town. And that's quite a simplistic straight plot that me as an adult didn't find all that intriguing, but the way that it's written, I can tell that if I read this with a child, they would be hooked. So I'm just letting it go from my shelf because it's not one that's really aimed and targeted for me. Not one that missed the mark, but one that hit the mark all too well. And there you have it. Those are the books that are leaving my shelf today. Thank you so much for joining me for this unhaul. I unhaul fairly regularly, so if you want to stick around, there will be more in the future. Let me know in this comment section down below, what was the last series you decided you would no longer continue? Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see more. And don't forget to hit that notification bell to be updated every time I have a new video. And you know what they say, onwards and upwards. Excelsior!